in the rise of Skywalker, we see the remnants of the second Death Star upon the ocean moon of Endor, or Keith Beer, instead of upon the forest moon of Endor, called Endor. And now that seems odd as the battle took place above the forest moon of Endor. Now, the explanation in the Visual Dictionary is that when the Death Star exploded, it ripped into hyperspace, dropping the remnants on the uninhabited moons of Endor instead of the habited moons of Endor, like the forest moon of Endor. But why would it do that? This seems like adding more complexity than needed. And this isn't the first time they've given the answer that gives more complexity than needed. When the Radis was rammed into the supremacy, their answer is why that was not done to the Death Star was because the Radish's shields were strong enough to defeat the Supremacy's shields. But why did no one ever do that to a ship before? Make strong enough shields to defeat the other ship's shields so they can ram it and use physics to their advantage. Well, they never gave an answer. So I feel like I can give more simple, more elegant answers, and here are mine. How did Death Star parts end up on the ocean moon of Endor? Its destruction had enough force to push parts away from the force moon of Endor, maybe by slingshotting them. Some of those parts entered the path of the ocean moon of Endor, where they were caught and fell to the surface. Now to the other questions. How can they hyperspace ram now? How can they hyperspace jump into a planet's atmosphere? How did a Star Destroyer hit a ship while leaving hyperspace? And how can one blockade a planet? They always could if the situation is right. Hyperspace lanes connect the galaxy. They pass as rivers through space, where they connect to the gravity wells of planets and stars. They may also pass through some planets and stars. Where the lane connects to a planet or a star's gravity well, it ends. These points may vary in size and may enter the planet's atmosphere. For the ship to enter hyperspace, it needs to be within the endpoint of the lane and pointing in the direction of the lane. If an object is in the way of the ship when it jumps, they will collide at the speed of light, unless the other object jumps at the same time. Shields can deal with small objects like the gases make up an atmosphere. Ships maintain their previous momentum while exiting. Then neither Death Star was in the hyperspace end point during their battles. Scarif has two hyperspace lanes whose endpoints overlap. The hyperspace lane to Starkiller Base overlapped with its atmosphere. The hyperspace lane outside of Crate is very large and distant from the planet, and Naboo has only a single hyperspace endpoint. Only simple new Physics laws are made for Star Wars this way, and the first explanation for the wreckage doesn't even involve any new laws of physics. It explains more events and possibilities than just the one it's using to be explained. And the second one uses Star Wars Legends explanation for it, and they're elegant. These would have been better explanations. Like and subscribe.